most of you guys have, you know, actually took somebody out and you made some leadership. When you take them out, um, don't look at it as like a chore. You know, look at it as like, all right, it's my job to get this guy going or whatnot, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them how to get it done. When you take somebody out, you should be excited about that. It's, it's more opportunity. Instead of like thinking like, oh man, I've got to, you know, worry about me. Like I'm, I'm get one deal. I'm going to make sure I get the deal, you know, before he does. I got to eat first. You know, think about it like I'm taking this guy out. I'm going to have twice as many people back to the table. I'm going to have twice as many opportunities because now there's two people hooking and pitching. And work out a system to where you're able to show them money. Just, you know, hold yourself accountable. And don't worry, you know, the worst thing you can do on the first day is take somebody out and write seven. I know it sounds crazy. But you take somebody out on the first day, you write seven, you set an unrealistic expectation for them. You take them out, they're like, oh man, I, I, like, this is the standard. Of, you know, and sometimes it works out to their favor or whatnot, but the best days are the days when you go out there on your first day and you get your face kicked in until like 7.30 at night and then you get a deal. Right? Because now they're like, okay, I see what it takes. And you're saying a realistic expectation. This is what it's going to take. Now, obviously, there's going to be days where we're going to have the sevens and we're going to have the threes. But on the first day, I want you to see this so that way you know what type of work ethic it's going to take to get, you know, in order to make it happen. Um, and then have a structure for your training. I came from an office to where um, when I first got promoted, I went to Houston with my promoting owner. Okay? Um, there was a lot of things that, you know, like, in the office right now, the office that you guys are in, wherever you may be, everybody has a different, there's many ways to skin a cat. So there's no one way if it's all. But um, at the end of the day, it's important to have some type of structure. You know, for me, when I went, you know, those things that I, when I was in my office, I was like, when I get to ownership, I'm going to do this differently. You know, and then when I first got promoted, I actually was sharing an office with my promoting owner. And those things that he did well, and I just seen that, I was like, well, I want to do this structure. And one of the things that I felt like he, he should have changed early on, which he did ultimately was, you know, his, this leader, you know, Stephen taught one way. And then, you know, put up Curtis, and Curtis taught one way. And then you got a bunch of people in the office that are kind of doing their own thing. Like, Curtis has his five guys that do it Curtis's way, and then Stephen has his three guys that do it Stephen's way. But what happens when we work together? Now they're both looking like they're both lost, you know. So just create a structure in the office. You know, create a, a set system, you know, that's easy to streamline, you know, because um, a lot of times, you know, some of us have game. And one thing I learned, I had game. You can't teach game. You got it, you don't, right? But what, what's cool about the system that we've created is the, the system, uh, you know, it's very duplic it's, it's duplicatable. We've got people from every walk of life, every lifestyle, every background that can take this system and apply it and be successful. Um, so I'm going to go through our office training and how, you know, our, our days, um, like I said, there's different ways to skin a cat. Some of you guys work in Best Buy, some of you work in Sam's Club. Some of you guys do it differently, but ultimately this is our structure and this is what, you know, this helped us. On um, the first day, you know, I, I, show, I talk about the C factors. I'm telling them why it's important, why it's important in maintaining eye contact, enthusiasm, excitement, how it helps us in the business. I'm talking about the three types of days. You're going to have a slow morning, fast night, fast morning, slow night, or just a steady day. You know, and, I, and the importance of maintaining their attitude and the why behind it. Five types of customer, a rude no, uh, a quick no, um, professional time waster, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the quick, uh, the shopper, and then the yes. You know, so you have to go through these five people to get to this one person. So, you know, I, I kind of preempt them on that. Um, the LOAs, there was an analogy that was used to me in my day one of training that I still use to this day. I break it down real simple for them, okay? You know basketball, right? They're like, yeah, who's the best basketball player? Now, obviously, you're going to get different answers from that. Some people are going to say Michael Steve Curry, some people are going to say uh, Michael Jordan, some people are going to say LeBron, some people are going to say Kobe. But whatever they say, just agree with them. Yeah, that's the best player, right? So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you're going to ask them, who, who's the best player? Oh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. All right, so let me ask you a question. If you and Michael Jordan stood at a free throw line, right, and you guys had a free throw contest, and you had 500 shots, uh, shots Stephen, and I had 50, or uh, Vice versa. Michael Jordan had 50 and you had 500. Who do you think would win that contest? Some people are going to be like, I suck at basketball. Michael Jordan, by all means, I'm like, really? If you had, you had 500 and he had 50, you suck that bad at basketball, you couldn't make 50 shots. You know, so I suck at basketball. So I'm not going to talk or whatever. But, you know, um, you know, I put it in perspective like that. And it kind of sets the tone. They're like, okay, well, obviously it works the same in this business. The more opportunities you give yourself, the more, you know, the more people you bring out the table, the more money you make. It's a lot of averages. Not how good you sell direct to be, the more options you give yourself. So it kind of sets the tone for more whatnot. Um, you know, the pitch entry, three, three things that we look for. So you guys might want to write this down. This is like, you know, what, what I, when I bring somebody back to the table, three things I look for is one, do they want to talk to me? I want to talk to people who want to talk to me. So do they even want to talk to me? Two, do they know what I'm talking about? Okay, so obviously you have a DirecTV shirt, you're standing next to a DirecTV kiosk. You ever got somebody back to the table and like, oh man, this is DirecTV? 
Like, yeah. like, you know, like, you know, you got it halfway through the pitch, like, oh, this is sound like? Like, you know, what, like, what do you think? You know, what we're talking about. So, you know, do they know what we're talking about? And three, can I help them? And can I help them doesn't always mean, am I going to save them money? You know, can I help them upgrade their home? Can I help them better, you know, just whatever it may be. So, can I help them? So, those are three things I'm looking for. So, I'm letting the customer, um, my new guy know what to look for and when, when he's fishing or whatnot. And compliance. The focus that day is 10 people back to the table. Um, you're not necessarily doing a presentation, you're just going to watch. You're going to bring people back, you're going to hook them, you bring, I'm telling them, hey, I'm going to work with you, not for you. You go out to the field today, you, do, you bring back 10 people, I guarantee you I can do that. Guarantee you. you know? But I'm going to go out and work. I'm going to get people back to the table. If I bring back to the table, I'm closing, that's my deal. You know? So you eat what you kill, I eat what I kill. So that's the focus. So just make, make sure you set that expectation before I'm setting them out. Um, one, one app written in the new, new start's name. Okay? And you send them home with homework. Day two, bundle breakdown, fact-finding questions, um, that, why, why we ask the questions that we ask. Um, you know, I use the doctor analogy, right? So if somebody came into, if you went to the doctor, right, and the first thing you told them, like you walk in, and before you can even say something, he just prescribes you something. It's like, here, just take this. And you're like, okay, well, you didn't, like, how would you feel about that doctor? He'd be like, well, shit, you know, uh, excuse my friends. He'd be like, um, this guy obviously doesn't know what he's doing because he's just giving me a remedy. It's the same thing when you ask the fact finding questions in the presentation. The, um, you're, you're trying to cater your pitch towards that member, right? It's like Subway. You don't serve the sandwich the same to everybody. If you were working at Subway and you get everybody the same sandwich, you're going to get some happy customers, but other customers are going to be unsatisfied because some people don't like mayonnaise, some people don't like mustard, just whatever it may be. So just make sure when you, ask, when you talk about the fact finding questions, you're asking the questions to try, try, try to identify the, uh, the member's hotspots. Um, you know, you got two, uh, the five minute friend is important, you know, uh, two ears, one mouth, you know, listen more than you talk, identifying how spots transition, you know, over to, uh, you know, the right side of the board. The focus is uh, left side of the board on their own, so they're doing the left side of the board, one app written uh, in New Star's name. Um, homework, sending them home with sales guide to start looking at channel packages or whatnot. Uh, selling the sizzle on the right side of the board, catering the pitch, pricing, you know, equipment pictures, these are all day, day three. And keep in mind, when you're going through these things, Think about it like a baby, right? So the reason I do it like this, when I talk about day one, sometimes you get that, that guy that comes in and he's just got game, right? And you try, you try to go through our C factors and why they're well, I already know that, I already know that, you know, don't, like, let's get to the meat and the potatoes and stuff. And when you do that, um, you're, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Make sure you're going through, like I stick by, I don't care if you feel like you're ready to learn the pitch, I'm gonna go through day one because I need you to know the why behind what we do in each day. Because when, you, when you're facing a slump, like what happens is that when you water down the, 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 the training, then they're faced with a slump, they don't know how to overcome it because they're missing key aspects, the like C factors, LOAs, you know, all this stuff is meant to be like a, you know, when you go to the mechanic and you plug yourself into the machine, you're like something like check engine lights on, I don't know what's wrong, you plug it in the machine, the, the code comes up, tells you exactly what's wrong, what to fix, it's the same thing with this presentation. If you have a structure behind what you do, it's going to be easily, I could easily identify with my guys what's wrong with them. Let me hear your pitch. How many side by side with you? I could break down and tell you why you're you're in the slump that you are. And that's that's you know it, it's important to have that type of structure. Um, overcoming objections, holding back rebuttals is day four. I'm um, asking for business, uh, closing on full retail price, buying uh, questions. So buying questions versus versus uh, you know a rebuttal. So a lot of times people need to understand where you know when to ask for the business, when to shut up, take out the pin, go we call it, stop. You know, shut up, take out pin, you know, um, not talking past the point of sale. Um, you know, and by, by day five, you know, it's more like just polishing them up, you know. Um, you know, they're, they're doing paperwork to button up of the customer, and they're closing on their own, A to Z. Um, when you're in the field, you want to give credit and take blame. Uh, Zach talked about this a little bit, and, um, you know, he was talking about, you know, uh, he used it in a different uh, form or whatnot, but as far as, you know, um, you know, the training goes, when you're in the field, um, if something bad happens, like if you don't have the day that you would like, talk, blame, take blame for it. Like, hey, we didn't have the day we liked, it's okay, man, because I didn't do enough side-by-sides today, or I didn't bring enough, I, my hook wasn't strong, or my seat factors were on point, but take blame for it, you know? And then when, when you do well, give credit to the system. You know, it's funny, because I got a guy in my office, right? He did sap, uh, Sunday, he did like seven, right? So he comes in the office, put, beating his chest. Okay, so what worked for you? I don't know, I'm just good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm like, I'm like, so, you know, all right, so you got this new girl who's just starting a week. What, what worked for you? What, what, how, what can you tell her that you did that from the system that would result in you getting seven deals? 
And he thought about it. And you got to be able to do that. So if you go out today and you're like, man, I did seven deals today. I did seven deals because I did 12 side by sides. You know, I made sure I brought back quality people to the table. So quality time with quality people. Um, I made sure that, um, you know, I, 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 I found their needs and I gave it to them. Or like just whatever it may be, but you're able to, you know, impact that next guy and like, you know, you're, you're, you're relating. So that way the next guy's not, you know, looking at Steven and be like, man, Steven did seven yesterday. But Steven's good. I can't do with Steven. He got game. I can never do what he does, you know. But if Steven's like, well, this is how I did it and this is why I did it. And yeah, you may not do, you know, whatever, but, you know, this, this is going to get you better results than you get now by, you know, and show them what in the system is working for you. You know, you got to be able to relate that. Um, Work with them, not for them. So it's important when you take somebody out. You know, a lot of times, you know, don't be afraid to let them scrape their knee as well. You know, so, uh, another point. You know, so like sometimes we get we jump in too fast when we're training. We want to save them. You know, and have to get them a deal. They've got to feel that sting sometimes. You know, we call them lessons. One hundred twenty dollar lesson, right? And sometimes, you know, like uh, there be times when I'll take a guy out and I could use my game to close this deal, and I'll just let him walk. And it's not the fact that I'm letting money go, it's just because I want this guy, it's going to be more, like if I give that guy, if I teach him how to do it the wrong way one time, it's just going to spiral out of control versus let me show him how to do it right the first time, um, you know, and then maybe not get the results, but he'll learn from me, and then, you know, he'll be more effective down the road. Um, maintain professionalism, examples, everything, you know, inside and outside the Costco, you know, we live in Vegas, I tell my guys all the time, you know, yeah, you know, you only work, you know, 40 hours a week, but you know, outside of work, you need to make sure that you're, you know, you're respecting the opportunity. You know, because things that you can do outside of work can affect your opportunity in the long run. Not to mention, you want these people to follow you. You know, so like, you know, maintain professional. Your Facebook, you know, you're you're like, yeah, you know, you're a top leader. I'm gonna be a business owner, but your Facebook's got you doing a keg stand. I mean, as your profile picture, I mean, that's not the right example that you want to set. So just make sure that you're, you know, you're setting the right example in and outside of work. I'm being honest, you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> you know, pace versus attitude. You know, talking about like, you know, showing them how to track their, you know, like, uh, you know, and this goes back to holding them accountable. You know, um, make sure that, you know, um, they understand, you know, the uh, LOAs, um, how to, you know, break down their TPCs. Um, break down their day, this is important. I know that before I come from the old school, we used to do night, night atmosphere. Um, call your guys. If you're not doing the night, night atmosphere, um, especially while you're in training, you're calling your guy every night. The last thing you want your guy to do is to go home and talk about his negative for the day with his spouse. That doesn't understand the business, right? Because they're going to be like, oh, baby, you don't, you know, you... This, whatever, and they're just going to nag him out. So make sure that you're dealing with any negatives beforehand. You're preempting it. So you're calling your guy, hey, how was your day? And, you know, asking those three questions that Flo is asking, or like, you know, you know, what do you feel like, you know, what's the best part of your day? What do you, you know, what do you feel like you could have done better? You know, and just, you know, digging out the negatives so that way they, they're coming in the next day with a clear head. They're not, you know, thinking about the negative they had the day before. Um, hold your guys accountable. You know, build, break, build. You know, you hear it all the time. You know, don't be afraid to have that conversation with your guy. This also goes into like, you know, the guy that's, um, you know, he's out there and he's doing well. You know, it's okay to pass somebody on the back, but don't over promote a situation. Because then, you know, you get that cockiness and they're like, oh, man, all right. My guys, you know, they, when they did their first, you know, I came from, you know, Houston and, you know, they knocked out the park like one week. And they thought I was going to pat them on their back. Oh, team night, this night. Nah, one clap. It's over. That's it. All right, good job. <laughs> you messed up. You messed up because you know what? You showed me what you could do. So now anything less is expected. Yeah, I'm going to cheer the guy that, you know, has is, is been struggling a while and he's starting to do well. But the guy that's consistently doing well, I'm just going to push him. Push him, push him, push him until, he, you know, he gets better. I'm going to hold him accountable for what he's capable of. But ultimately, guys, um, you know, with training, training is the reason why, you know, I've been fortunate to be in the position I'm in. Like, by helping other people hit their goals, I've been able to hit my goals. You know, and I come before you guys, like, humble. I, I'm not trying here to beat my chest or brag, but, like, I got it. Like this is what's going to get you out of the field is being able to reproduce and re retrain and teach other people our, our, our system. And what's cool is that they've already created it all for you. You just have to duplicate it. You know, and the better you can get at it, the, like you know, and it never stops. Like right now, like I, I learned how to teach somebody to do side by side. Now I'm teaching them how to be owners. You know, I got a row full of owners and these guys. Now I'm teaching them how to be better owners, and then teach them how to promote other owners. And it just it's ongoing. So the training never stops. But if you can get good at this, this is how you get from you know you get out of the field. You know, you gotta hate, you know, love the field, but you gotta hate it. I hated the field. You know, um, this was gonna get you from rep to manager, from manager to regional, and from regional to national. It's training. By, by, by far. My number's on there, guys. If you guys, uh, you know, wanna reach out to me, feel free. Um, 
So guys, we've done compliance now, right? We've done second round interviews, how to get the guy on, how to train the guy. Um, training is so important. I think Eddie spoke on it, being selfless, right? You know, being selfless. Um, really thinking about other people, that's what training is all about.